Are you aware of what a compiler does when an object gets created? And where does this object go and sit in the memory? Well, I'm going to be discussing exactly all of this in this video. So keep watching. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Soumya. So let's get started with how memory allocation works. The underlying OS provides some memory to every program that runs and the memory can be divided into two areas, the stack and the heap. And in every program, there are four entities that need to live on this memory, namely local variables, instance variables, methods that execute, and objects. Local variables are the variables that are declared inside a method and they live on the stack. They are temporary and they live on the stack as long as the method is executing. So any currently executing method along with its local variables lives on the stack until it's done. Objects live on the heap. And since we know that instance variables belong to their respective objects, the instance variables lives inside the object on a heap. And let's see how the memory is allocated on a heap to an object. This is my heap memory. And I have created a car object. Which has certain instance variables like gears, wheels, height. So you can see in heap memory, the object always has a sufficient amount of memory to contain all its instance variables. Now we will unravel the mystery that is object creation and understand why is it so important. Object creation is a two-step process, declaration and instantiation. You can see that in my declaration, I have declared a my car reference variable of the type car. I've used two keywords here the reference variable and the type car. My car is called a reference variable because it does not hold the actual object, but just a reference or the address of the memory pointing to the actual object. And car is called a type because car is a class. And what is a class? A class is a logical framework that defines the relationship between its members. So class is nothing but a user-defined data type. And of course, I can use this data type to create my reference variable. Instantiation. The new keyword actually creates the object and the memory is allocated to this object for which the reference is assigned to the mica reference variable. There's one thing that is important here and need to be understood that the new keyword allocates memory only at runtime. So the memory gets allocated when the program is executing. Now let's understand what happens inside this new keyword? And what is called inside this new keyword is a constructor. Let me first show you how a constructor looks like. By design, it might look and feel like a method, but it is not because firstly, it has the name same as that of the class. And secondly, it has no return type. And this applies for all the constructors. You might be wondering, I never wrote the code for a constructor until now because I didn't have to. The compiler did that for me. The compiler provides a default constructor when we don't write a constructor of our own. And it does it for every class because every class needs a constructor. The key feature of a constructor is that it is called during the life cycle of an object so that we can immediately create an object and start working on it. This implies that when an instance of a class is created, you can get a fully initialized usable object through constructor. I will show you with an example.
So when I create my MyCard object, during the object creation itself, the constructor gets called and all the properties gets initialized and I get a working object as soon as I create my MyCard object. Now, there's one problem here. What if I don't want all the cars to have the same height and weight? I want the user to enter these values. Well, there is a solution. Parameterized constructor takes in input parameters and initializes those values with all the properties. I have written another constructor here and I will take these parameters as input and assign each of these values to the properties. So when I create another car object, I can pass those values and this time since I am passing these values, my parameterized constructor will get called and all the properties will get initialized. Well, there is also one more thing. I can have both my default constructor and my parameterized constructor in the same class. This is called constructor overloading, which allows multiple constructors to be present in the same class. But similar to method overloading, the constructors have to have a different argument list and each of them will be called based on what values are being passed during object creation. We know here that there is a possibility that the car class is inheriting from the vehicle class. And the most important point about inheritance is that the child class object not only holds its own variables but everything from its pair. So when I create a child class object, it has to get space for its own variables and also its parent class variables. And we understood that when an object is created, every time a constructor gets called and each class has a constructor. So if I combine these two points, that means when a child class object gets created, the constructor of its class runs along with its parent class constructor up to the inheritance hierarchy. Now let's understand with this example. When I create my child class, that is my car class object, the constructor of the car class gets called along with the constructor of the vehicle class. Why and why is it important? Because to get a fully formed car object, we need a fully formed ve vehicle class object before the car object. Now you must be wondering, again, the same question. I didn't write any constructor for my parent class as well. And how am I going to invoke a parent class constructor? Well, again the same answer. My dear friend compiler did that for me. And if I want to invoke my parent class constructor, the super keyword is used because the parent class is also called the super class. And I didn't write the super keyword also. Why? Because the compiler did that for me. The compiler writes the super keyword as the first statement of the constructor and calls the cl vehicle class constructor before the car class constructor finishes. This is called constructor chaining. So when I create my car class object, the first constructor that gets invoked is of my car class but the first constructor that finishes is of my vehicle class because I need a fully formed vehicle object before my fully formed car object. Let that sink in because it's very important. Similar to how a child cannot exist before its parents, a child object cannot exist before its parent object. Similar to how we had a parameterized constructor in my car class, I can also have a parameterized constructor in my vehicle class. But I am not creating the object of my vehicle class. So how am I going to pass these values all the way up to my vehicle class? Well, I can do it from my car class object itself. But we will understand everything through an example. You know that every vehicle has a license plate and I need to access this license plate of my vehicle class. But it's a private property and I can access private properties only through getter and setter methods. Well, I don't want to do all of that and create a car object then call the getter setter properties of my vehicle class. The simple way would be to pass this value from my super keyword. 
and yes, I can do that. So I am taking the LP value here in my car constructor and then in the super keyword, I am going to pass this license plate value. The super keyword will internally call my vehicle class constructor and assign the LP value to the license plate. Of course, I'm going to add the LP value here that gets assigned to my license plate. And this is the end of this video. In this video, I have covered all the topics about memory allocation, constructor, constructor overloading, constructor chaining, and parameterized constructor. If you're happy with the videos I'm creating and the content that I'm sharing, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.